Hey everyone, I'm Joe. Today it's time for me to do my monthly reading wrap up for August 2019. Now, officially, uh, August has become my lightest ever reading month since creating my first ever video on this channel because I only read three books in total, which for me is very light indeed. Now, I did predict that this would happen, maybe not quite as light as I did, but still, due to the fact that in the middle of August, I went to Dublin Island to attend the Worldcon that is held there each year. And I've attended last year and now this year. And I predicted that I would not read very much because I was too excited by the thought of going to Dublin before the event. During Worldcon, frankly, I was never stationary long enough to read. And since being back from Worldcon, I've been catching up on stuff and the other things have got in the way a little bit anyway due to obviously being on holiday so this is to be expected it's still a shame that I only read three books but you know these things happen and I'm happy with it overall and I'll get straight on to talking about the first book which is a buddy read with Andrea from Infinite Text and that book is The Fires of Heaven by Robert Jordan this is the fifth book in the Wheel of Time series it is a big um, quite a hefty book. I enjoyed it to a certain degree but I didn't love the book. Now I read half of this 14 book epic fantasy series three years ago and at that halfway point after seven books I just couldn't at the time manage to read more books because it just felt like it, the plot and the pacing was so slow that I just couldn't manage it at the time and frankly me and Andrea are having the same issue again as what I originally had. The pacing of these books is incredibly slow. I feel as though most of the time he could cut down what he wants to say and combine several books into one because the plot and the narrative just wonders really badly. The focus is not there a lot of the time. I, mean, I know a lot of people would disagree with me on this because this has an awful lot of fans, the Wheel of Time has, and rightly so i mean it is a good overall idea my issue is with the pacing and the way he constructs the plot and the characters the characters are good it's just slow and an odd pacing which really makes me struggle a lot of the time but i will persevere at least for now whether the, between the two of us we will manage to push each other on and actually finish the series this time i can't say because we we're already struggling this is going to be an interesting challenge to read all 14 books. The second book that I read was Swastika Night by Murray Constantine. Murray Constantine is the pseudonym of an author called uh, Catherine Burdekin, although she's born as Catherine Cade, so got multiple uh, names here. Now, Swastika Night is, unsurprisingly, considering the no uh, cover and the title, is an alternative history novel about what if uh, the Nazis had won World War II and this is set 700 years later. The Nazis have dominated the earth technology and society have gone, you know, the Nazi way, you know, the sort of blood purity way of being you know, white supremacists. And essentially this is a very much a case of there is one man um, at the start of the novel, the focus of the novel, uh, an Englishman and he's Nazi sympathetic friend um, they come to realise because the Englishman sees a photo of Adolf Hitler the real Adolf Hitler as he actually was in real life as in you know not a very tall guy with dark hair and a bit of a gut on him in mythology in the book after World War II he became this symbol and icon and essentially became a god within the Nazi and within world society because of course you know um, the Nazi party changed the history and did the history books they burned anything that wasn't um, working with their version of reality so everybody thinks of uh, Adolf Hitler and indeed he's on the cover here as the sort of perfect Aryan um, you know Nazi male six and a half foot tall you know Muscly with long blonde hair and you know, just looks magnificent. That wasn't the case, obviously. And it's a journey about 
what would you do if an idol isn't what you think it is and what is a symbol to a country that is already failing because this Nazi party and Nazi world world is failing their systems the um, birth rate is dropping off because the treatment of women is horrific and that was really hard to stomach as well because they treat women as basically property and breeding stock which is really difficult to re manage to read um, I'm glad I read it because it did have some interesting if brutally dark ideas but you have to be in the right frame of mind to read this though because it is quite dark and nasty in a way obviously we do deal with the Nazi party and alternative history on that but I am glad I read it I just wouldn't necessarily read reread this in the future because I'm an optimist by nature, this is hard for me to actually manage, frankly. And the third and final book is a reread for me, and that is The Bastard Legion by Gavin Smith. Now, the reason that I reread this at the very end of August is quite simply that I read, uh, brought, in fact, the second and third books in this series only in the World Con in Dublin. So I thought it's a best read, reread this first book and remember exactly what went on so I can immediately and indeed you'll see the second and third books in a book haul and indeed in a wrap up soon because I will be reading them and I'm glad I did because this book is a, a sort of a cross between sort of military science fiction partially a kind of science fiction adventure and space opera element as well essentially the whole basic idea of it is the main character is a woman called Miska she is uh, a formerly military person. She also has hacking skills. Her father, uh, before the book starts, gets murdered about six months before. And basically she's on a mission to find out the killers of her father because he was also military. And it seems suspicious that he was somehow killed by a couple of random um, people trying to burgle his house. She actually thinks which it pretty much definitely must be a case of obviously assassination rather than a random burglary gone bad. However, the way she goes about trying to find out um, his killers is by taking over a um, prison spaceship. This is a long-term um, solution for convicts in this world where this spaceship never really stops moving apart from when it briefly slows down to pick up new uh, convicts at a planet and then, it'll, and then it'll move to another planet so the prisoners can't go anywhere they can't do anything so she essentially hijacks this massive prison ship and indeed using the uh, the droids on board she which are only a very small number of however she manages to fit all the prisoners uh, on the ship with explosive implants in their head somewhere which basically means that if they disobey her she can literally make the heads explode. So she's got herself a convict army, essentially, or mercenary sort of convict army, army of sorts. And indeed, that's what she starts trying to become a kind of a mercenary leader of sorts. A bit one where the actual mercenaries are against their will. Interesting concept, and it's done really well. The pacing is fun and really um, good in the most part. There are slower moments but they mix well with the action parts the reason for the plot and the overall backstory again works very well and it's uh, it's a good length as well it's not too long it's not too short it keeps the pace flowing and the story going and i am very happy and indeed eager to read books two and three in this series because this was a really good book overall now with that said um that's actually it for this video. I've only read three books, as I said. If you've read any of these three books, or indeed if you have any suggestions on books you think I might like to read based on these three, or indeed any other books that you see me talk about, then please leave a comment. I'm always interested to talk about books, both familiar and new, with people on Booktube. And that said, that is it for this video. Oh, and obviously all my social media links can be found in the description box below, of course. So with that said, that is it for this video, so thank you for watching and I'll see you another day. Bye for now.